Hey guys, I want to talk to you a little bit more about kids sparring. And when I say kids, I'm really talking even small adults. Uh, but I'm going to use the word kids here regularly. Uh, but it could apply to almost anybody. Um, sparring is such a simple thing, yet it can be dangerous and it can be complicated at the same time when you get bad folk involved in it. Uh, if you've got a kid at a gym or you are a kid at a gym, um, you need to be careful and be aware of everything that's going on around you. Have your ears open and listen because you can do the least little small thing and somebody get upset and try to set you up in a sparring session. And this has happened since time and memorial and will continue to happen. Now, if you are a parent, I had somebody talk to me last week, a wonderful, wonderful lady. And she's got a big kid. Uh, I haven't seen him, but uh, I know he weighs a lot, and I know he's six feet tall, and he's 14 years old. So... I don't know his body type, uh, but I know he's big. And she was talking to me a little bit about having a hard time getting her son placed in some sparring. And so this could just apply to anybody, but specifically to her, number one, you've got friends uh, that will guide you and could probably tell you better than me in closer to today's time. Uh, back in my day, you just got slung out there and, uh, you know, as good as you got, you just got in there with better people. So as you raised up the line, they'd put somebody in there better. So it'd be like this. And, uh, but these old men knew better than to uh, let a kid get in there and really, really. Uh, now, kids got knocked out. Kid or two lost a tooth. Uh, a constant getting the wind knocked out of you. Most younger folks don't even know what that means. Uh, it's a god-awful feeling. You, you your lungs collapse, they will not immediately open, and you are trying to breathe air in, and you're stuck. Nothing will happen. Uh, and you have to wait for your diaphragm to release and your lungs to open up. And this is a very scary feeling because you're gasping for breath anyway um, before you get the wind knocked out of you and your lungs deflate. And it's uh, almost like sucking the air out of a plastic bag and it's all crumpled up. And then you, you let loose the top of it and the bag will just open back up on its own. And you have to let it open back up on its own. Uh, so that's a very scary situation. And getting knocked out is scary. Um, but these things don't happen often, and especially in gyms today. I put that video out, uh, so it's the video before this one, where you can see Joe basically playing around with two kids that are his own age. Uh, he's really playing with the man, but I want to talk to you about the man because we had a problem with, with that man. I'm calling him a man because we were told that he had just turned 15 and he had just turned 18 and we were lied to about that. 
This guy was 6'3". We were told he weighed 154 pounds, and it looked unusual to me. And him wearing very baggy shorts and uh, gym pants and real loose shirts. Uh, you know, I'm old. I didn't put two and two together. And really, here's why I didn't put two and two together. The gym owner is a former IBF world uh, lightweight champion. And... Uh, I told him when I walked in that gym, you, you, any setups, you cross the line, any fuddy-duddy, and I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's how it's going to end for you. And there's going to be nothing you can do. I said, if you're square with that, uh, and you realize my line, you can give me your lines, and if I accept your lines, uh, then fine, we'll come to the gym. Well, he told me he was fine and understood and never would do anything like that and turned around a few weeks later and did just just what he said he wouldn't do uh you need to be a strong parent before you let your child in the gym you need to be prepared to go in there and raise hell and show your ass if you need to i'm an old man i got a plate behind my throat and my spine and a lot of other issues uh, but I went up in that gym and I threatened to beat the crap out of this world champ in front of everybody in his gym. And I explained to the rest of them, if you get giddy, bring it on. Now, I did have a pistol in my gym bag. And I did have a pair of uh, metal knuckles. You know, we call them brass knuckles. Uh, and I would have used both those things. Both those appliances would have been utilized. Uh, but I went in there and stood up. But we, you've got to look out for a lot of stuff. We were told, uh, and a lot of this stuff we found out well after the fact. But Joe was about 180 to 182. Uh, in there, you know, just fluctuate between 180 and 182. Um, this kid, we were told, uh, he was 6'3". Uh, we were told he was 15. He was 18. We were told that he weighed 154 pounds. That was not true. He weighed 174 pounds, which in amateur ranks up around Joe's age, uh, that would have been about almost the same weight class of heavyweight for his age. Uh, uh, the world champ we, we had a sparring session with the boy and the world champ was coaching the boy and here I am my Spanish is very limited it intimidated Joe uh, I, could, I didn't know what the hell was being said and after it was said and done I intimidated this man and I intimidated this 18-year-old boy had his dad down there. I intimidated him, and I intimidated everybody in there. And uh, the boy left the gym. We stuck around for a couple of weeks. We didn't want to stay there any longer, but we did. We stayed uh, long enough to ensure that boy left. And what that boy has to deal with now, he can't go in a gym anywhere uh, we live outside of a big city called Bucaramanga here in Colombia. And there's gyms all over. And he, he can't really go in one and feel safe because he knows we're hopping from gym to gym. Uh, we're not making a home at one gym. Uh, the home gym is in our home. Uh, I've got enough equipment to probably... Uh, almost open two gyms so we're lucky but if you're in north america or you're in western europe or the uk i don't think you're going to have any of the problems that we have experienced here which has been a whole host of them uh joe's tough he was able to take it but joe is old school himself i threw him to the wolves uh there's a reason why you throw a kid to the wolves as well 
uh, throwing a kid to the wolves will keep a kid from getting hurt. Doesn't that sound crazy? Uh, but it's the truth. You put a kid in there against a supreme adverse uh, uh, adversity and let them take a pounding and see if they can handle it right at the beginning because uh, if you're thinking about competing now you can go ahead and just train as a boxer and not compete and that's great too I encourage that for all boys everybody and girls too uh, but Joe was in there with the wolves and uh, said it time and time again a uh, guy that was a, a very good Venezuelan prize fighter beat the crap out of Joe two or three times a week for seven or eight or nine weeks and uh, Joe's tough he can take a punch uh, he can do it all but I wanted to put up the sparring that I put up here because one of them uh, maybe two of them is a little aggressive so I would call it a medium spar Joe is always holding back uh, in any sparring and that's because this kid can punch I mean this this kid can hit um, there's no embellishment going on with that he can hit and uh, he knocked a boy out in Ocania we made a had a funny story about it but uh, in reality we were very scared about that number one we don't really want to hurt anybody uh, if we're in a comp if he's in a competition uh, every it, it goes a song now I mean that's the sport but in sparring he's always holding back he's always moving slow he's always throwing slow uh, and a portion of that is because of what we experienced in Ocania uh, with this one kid. And, uh, uh, but you see Joe's kind of medium, uh, probably, Joe, when you were in there with Diego, how many percent you think you were going? About 35, maybe 30. All right. So he says about 30. I think it's probably about 35 uh, but you know he's moving slow he'd speed up to try to catch the guy but when he'd go to pop him in and he'd back off and he hit the boy pretty hard a couple of times but he, he didn't hit him hard for his punch so always looking out always uh, you know don't want to get in and just hurt a kid but when you see him with the other two kids He's going very gentle. And basically he's letting the other kids hit him uh, so he can move and uh, uh, get winded and get a good workout and so that, that the other boys can master their craft. And that's what it's about. And that's who you should have your, your, your kid around. But back to the wonderful wonderful mother in the United Kingdom I would suggest to you that since uh, your son is so big I mean he's bigger than Joe and Joe's big Joe's uh, just a hair under 510 right now but now Joe weighs 190 pounds and it's solid so I but I know if your kid's 14 and he's six foot and you were talking about him losing weight, I don't know that I would suggest that for him right now. I'd keep the weight on. I'd keep pushing forward if he really likes the sport. And I would talk to the, the trainer in there about getting guys that are a lot better than your son in there with your son that can move smaller guys. Uh, but there may be some bigger ones in there that can move really quick as well. Maybe guys that can move really quick that are bigger than your son. And I would talk to the trainer about getting him in there with those guys. But those guys not not giving him the one-two and the workover. Uh, 
those guys helping him hone his skills and, and allowing your son to hit them uh, for the time being. And if, if your son ends up getting in some tournaments now, I, I don't, if he's 14, I believe if you're at 174, 176, you're, uh, for the international rules, he would be a heavyweight at that age. So um, if he's over 174 or 76, it's one of those. Uh, so he can get in there and, and compete as a heavyweight uh, in his, uh, I believe he'd, maybe he'd be an intermediate uh, class at 14. That's how it's labeled here for Joe. So, I would think in those terms and just keep going and keep proceeding. But it is good that the trainer is having issues with figuring out where to place your son because that means they're caring about what's going on. And that's, that's exactly what you need. Um, but you just got to put your heads together and try to figure something out. But you are... You've got a lot of friends that know more than I do, uh, just on YouTube alone, and uh, they'll get you straightened out. And uh, to everybody else, just really, you, no matter where you are, you got to be careful with your kid. This is a contact sport, and uh, you. Uh, Joe's very intimidating, and if other kids will try to hoodoo him, and especially with, with me lurking in the shadows, uh, these kids will try something on anybody, you know. Uh, uh, Joe told that boy, he said, we're going to be sparring again next week, and I'm going hard on you. And that boy ran. That boy's dad got the police on me. You know, they were laughing. They were like, well, what the hell? You know, uh, your son's going to not go easy on him. Uh, he's going to, and, and his dad wants, him, wants to stop this. And, they, you know, everybody was laughing about that. And that's half the parents out here. They love their child to beat your child up or rough your child up or lie to them. Uh, get them in a sparring, <coughs> a sparring setup situation, and then uh, uh, when your kid retaliates uh, within the rules of boxing, they want to run. Then it's time to call the cops. You see, and uh, but that's what sets intimidating tough guys apart from the rest of the liberal wimpy crowd so these are stories and you'll get stories too that you'll be able to tell for the rest of your life and your kid will be able to tell his grandchildren and in that need right uh we don't know how far joe's gonna go with all this or whatnot but uh excuse me they're just wiping sweat here all the time and where i'm at i don't have a fan or anything going on me uh, because the noise comes in on the background, so I just sit here and sweat when I make these videos. But um, I hope, you know, I know I'm all over the place when I talk, but I hope that a little bit of this made sense to folks. Um, uh, you, you, there's, uh, and I've been told this, that you, you start hard and then you go soft uh, to set the parameters on things. Um, I don't necessarily know if I believe that's a good idea, and here's why. You don't know who's, who's, who's hard. And... Uh, so just get in, make a gentleman's agreement with the other guy. If the guy doesn't want to abide with it, knock his ass out. 
or just stop if you can't if you can't continue with it right uh, get try to get to the end of the round and uh, or make it through that spar this really what you want to do is make it through the spar and just maybe not spar that guy again uh, you know or go to a trainer there's a lot of times you just got to go to an adult and you should when you feel the, the need to and uh, that would be the most responsible thing to do because you don't want to uh, give another parent, even if their kid's a jackass, a $5,000 dental bill, you know, or broke ribs or something. And, you know, kids can be kids. They upset one another, and we do too as adults. So they just use some... A reasonable degree of common sense, but there's always some way to figure something out. Right now, Joe hasn't been sparring for a while, uh, I, right, and right now I'm in no pressure to do anything. Uh, people find that odd, right? They're like, rush to get it, rush, rush, get in these, I be in these tournaments, be in these. Joe's had a crap load of matches already he's won all of them with the exception of one uh, by TKO by stoppage um, we, we, there's not a lot that's necessary for him to go do and I'm at the point right now I'm real hesitant in what I'd choose to show somebody and uh, uh, my mode of thinking is uh Mike Tyson, I believe, had 29, 29 amateur matches. Now, he didn't start fighting pro till he turned 18. So he had four years there. He had 29 matches in all that time. Well, why, how could that be? Because Cus D'Amato was doing the right thing with him. He was moving him slow. And boy, oh boy, did it work. It worked greatly. And uh, this is why I'm not so pushy with Joe. We're, we, we'll be, we are going to a tournament. Uh, it's not going to be too much longer. I've actually put two tournaments that he should have been in off here in the past four months uh, due to us being where we're at and we're in the process of getting the place to move to um nothing seems to be working out with that but uh i'll work it out if i have to go buy a place uh i'll do what i have to do uh and it's gonna happen in this this coming month uh it's gonna happen soon but uh once we get comfortable uh he's gonna go to bogota and cartagena and participate in uh, a couple of tournaments in each of those respective cities and uh, then we'll probably wait two years I don't know what we'll do but we're in no no rush no hurry uh, honing skills is a wonderful thing to be doing a wonderful thing uh, we do have uh, a line of sparring coming up next week uh, with Joe. Uh, it will not be with uh, kids any longer. It's going to be with grown men. These men will be in their 20s or 30s. And well, why would you do that? Because that's what he needs. It's not going to benefit him to get to stroking around with a 15, 16, 17 year old. Just not going to benefit. Uh, may benefit his cardio and he enjoys doing it and it may help the other guy and if he chooses to do it he'll do, he'll do it uh, but it's not going to benefit him greatly you know, he's going to have to be in with grown men and uh, we're going to do that and that's what he wants to do so that's where we're at but just be careful in these gyms uh, you, you've got to be in a gym where the trainer uh, or coach, whatever they want to label themselves, 
uh, or trainers or coaches are watching what's going on around them. And uh, although I'm not a system guy, I don't like the, I, I think it's an assembly line and I don't really like it, but I understand you about have to do that when you got a lot of people in your gym. Uh, but there does need to be a systematic system in place to be watching what's going on at Pert near all times and having others out there that you trust. And, uh, so that's the key. But when you first go into a gym, you got no business sparring. Uh, Joe did, but I was standing right there, and I knew I know what I'm doing, and I know what these environments are about. But you, as a parent, if you put your child in a boxing gym, uh, it it ain't gonna kill you kill you kid to be in there for seven, eight, or nine weeks before they even spar. Uh, one thing your kid's got on his side is time. But folks don't seem to utilize time or uh, use it for the benefits that it that it can produce. But uh, anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Hope this helps you out in some way, shape, or form. Hope maybe some things that Joe's went through or that I went through in the past that anything we've told you helps you out. Uh, don't don't let it scare you away. <clears throat> <coughs> Sparring is something that is worked up in and worked up to. And uh, once you get popped a little bit, it becomes a, more of a normality to you. It's not a pleasantry, but it becomes a normality to you. And you can deal with it because boys have been dealing with this since time in, in memorial. So, if if boys have been doing it forever in a the day, then that means you can do it too. And mom and dad, that means you, you and dad, or you and mom, can let you let your uh, kid do it. So, God blessings to everybody. I know this was rambling on. Probably left out twenty things I wanted to say. As soon as I hit the stop button, I'll. They'll come to the front of my brain. But much love to everybody. Um, remember this, if nothing else. Get your child into a gym if they're going to box or any type of contact sport where great respect is shown from the people that are running the place or own it and that they are instilling to be boys and girls to be gratefully respectful to others as well. And if you do that, you won't go wrong. See you later, everybody.